Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. So there's been a revelation about the next Cortex-X CPU that's coming from ARM. It's codenamed Blackhawk and the rumour, the, 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 the kind of the speculation, the leak maybe, is that it will finally be able to compete in fair terms with Apple in terms of raw performance. So we're looking at a big performance leap in the next Cortex-X CPU that's coming up. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So if ARM follows its traditional naming, this new CPU codenamed Blackhawk will be called the Cortex-X5. Now the key points of the information we've got are this. So Patrick Moorhead, who is the founder, CEO and chief analyst of More Insight and Strategy, has written about ARM's next Cortex-X CPU codenamed Blackhawk. Blackhawk, and we'll talk more about Patrick in a moment. And in that, he says, and he's quoting here, Blackhawk will eliminate the performance gap between ARM design processors, so that's the Cortex X processors, the Cortex A processors, and ARM custom implementations. From that, we can read uh, Apple's implementations and, of course, Qualcomm's Nuvia implementations. Blackhawk will offer the largest year over year IPC performance increase that we've seen in the last five years and we'll talk more about what all that means in a moment. So is this information reliable? Well Patrick Moorhead isn't some script kiddie, somebody that stumbled across some info and then leaked it. He is a respected industry figure. His career involves working at AT&T, Compaq, AltaVista and AMD where in fact he was a corporate vice president. I've met Patrick on several occasions over several years and he's not kind of a, a, a one for random speculation. He's very much a, a kind of give me the facts, let's do the analysis, let's look at what's coming. Now actually because he's got this information including some quotes it sounds to me like this is some kind of soft leak to build expectations about the ARM chips that are going to be released in this year in 2024. So what is Blackhawk? Well it's the next Cortex-X CPU which as I said likely is going to be called the Cortex-X5. Of course we've already got the Cortex-X1234, the Cortex-X4 now appearing in the latest generation of uh, flagship smartphones. And the goal is to eliminate the performance gap between ARM design processors. So this is the key here. ARM designs its own processors. You've got the Cortex processors, Called its A processors, called its X processors. Okay, and, I, and if you don't know about any of these things, I do have a video that I only released quite recently, a beginner's guide to ARM's processors. I'd recommend you watch that. I'll link it in the description below so that you can get a, an understanding on how ARM uh, names its processors. But ARM isn't the only company that makes ARM compatible processors. Also, other companies do, most notably, Apple does and Qualcomm does with its Nuvia ones. And they license what's called an architectural license from ARM that gives them the right to build their own clean room. They're not based on ARM's Cortex processors, they are their own clean room implementations. And the idea is to eliminate the performance gap because it absolutely hats off to Apple, Apple's processors are, have been faster than ARM's processors over the last several years. And that's just, and it's bit of fact and it's I've tested it myself in very very different ways and it is just a fact ARM have been catching up and they're getting closer and closer however this x5 is meant to eliminate that performance gap so whether it'll overtake Apple's latest offerings or bring them right up to its heels we'll have to wait and see but we're no longer going to be in this case where it's always uh, far behind by one year or two years this the idea is it's going to bring it right up to to level with, with what Apple and uh, Qualcomm are offering. And this is said to be a quote from ARM's CEO, René Haas. Now the timeline fits that because René became the CEO of ARM just about two years ago when the deal with NVIDIA fell through, the, uh, the existing CEO then had to leave, a new CEO was put in place, and it takes about two years plus to design a CPU. So at some point along this process, he could have interjected, look, the, the CPU that's coming out in two years from now, he wouldn't he wouldn't have been able to do it for the one that was coming out that, you know, I think he became CEO in February. So the one that was coming out in April, he couldn't do anything about that. The one that was coming out in the April or the May after that, he couldn't do anything about that. The one that's coming out after that, which is the one we're dealing with now, he could have said, I want that one to eliminate this performance gap. So that does fit the timeline. If this was something they said 
uh, you know, that it was not within that two year time frame, I wouldn't have believed it. And as I said, this, this chip is meant to offer the largest year over year IPC performance increase that we've seen in the last five years. So year on year means comparing it now to the Cortex X4. Now ARM has consistently delivered double digit IPC increases each year. So the Cortex X3 to the X4, 10% increase from, and so on. So now in this case, we're gonna to have to see more than a 10% increase to reduce that performance gap. Now IPC means instructions per cycle. So when you have a CPU, you can run it at a certain clock speed and that does give you a certain uh, performance level. But of course, the more you can do at that clock speed, the greater the performance even still. So this is about the micro architecture, how it can do things at the uh, interior, internal design of the CPU. It's not about the clock speed itself, because if you clocked one processor at one gigahertz and another processor at one gigahertz, one of them will still be faster, regardless of the clock speed, because it has a better instructions per cycle. It can do more per one of those clock cycles. And this isn't about the process node, because that's just how you manufacture, which talks about the heat and the power, but the performance here comes from the fact that at the same clock speed, at the same process node, one Cortex chip is faster than the next one, the next generation, because it can do more per clock cycle. So how are Cortex X CPUs used? I do cover this in that other video, but with the introduction of the Cortex X1, then the CPU setup changed from the traditional four plus four. So we had four performance cores and then four efficiency cores. Then we started to see a whole bunch of different setups. They're all listed here. One X core, then three performance cores, and then four power efficiency cores. That was kind of the expected thing we were gonna see. But then Google surprised us with the G1 and the G2 because you had two X cores, and then two A cores, and then two efficiency cores. Then with the Google uh, Tensor G3, we've gone back to one again and a four plus four, so it's a nine core one. The Snapdragon, we've had a one plus two plus two plus three and a one plus three plus two plus two. The Dimensity 9300, all big core design. There are no power efficiency cores in that. You've got four Cortex X cores and then four Cortex A cores. And maybe when we get the Exynos uh, 2400 release soon we're going to see a 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 so that's a 10 core setup so the way this thing could be used is is you know there are so many combinations that the existing x1 through to x4 have been used it will be really interesting to see how the smartphone manufacturers want to use the x5 now it will depend on how much power of course if you want to have that performance if you if the idea is to get that high ipc then it might take more power for example the iphone only has six cores so here we've been listing phones with eight cores nine cores ten cores in the android space but in the apple space uh, there's only six cores. Why? Because those two high performance cores, which are really fast, but they're also very power hungry. That's why you don't see any iPhones with four high performance cores. And sometimes I read comments, uh, you know, to my YouTube videos here and people are like, oh yeah, but you wait because Apple put four cores in and then it will be like an octa core and it will just be destroy the competition even more. Well, no, it won't because it can't do that because those four cores would use so much power that the battery would drain very quickly but you do get those four cores or more in larger form factor devices. So iPad Pro, MacBooks have more CPU cores because they can handle that in terms of the battery size, the thermals, that's okay. But in the iPhone, you get this two plus four. So possible Blackhawk configurations would just be two plus four. I mean, they could do two very big powerful cores that use quite a bit of energy and then back that up with maybe some power efficiency cores or maybe some uh, middle cores. And of course we can have two plus four plus two, four plus four like the Exynos 9300, one plus three plus four, the traditional X core setup. It really does depend on the power envelope, the power budget. However, it will be really interesting to see what happens. So when are we going to see this? Well, traditionally ARM announces its new CPU and GPU designs in the spring. Uh, and I've covered that every year when there's been a new announcement. And it comes out under this banner of Total Compute Solutions, TCS. So it, TCS 24, that's 2024's version, is likely to be announced in the spring if ARM keep the same cadence. And there's no reason at the moment to believe that that's not what's going to happen. And that means that we then traditionally see devices that actually come out 
from Chinese OEMs in December and then devices through in 2025. Same cadence, but just one year later. So we're going to see the announcement in the spring, then chips in December, January and February, end of 2024 into 2025. Of course, the one wrinkle will be is that Qualcomm won't be using the Cortis X5 in its flagship, so it'll be using its own Nuvia-based chip. So, of course, that will affect the rollout of which uh, devices we see the X5 from which uh, manufacturers, certainly from MediaTek, but others are uncertain at this point. Okay, so that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Love to hear what you think about the uh, Cortis X5 and the possibility of closing that performance gap with ARM and with Nuvia. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget, if you like these videos, subscribe to the channel. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.